Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to be introduced to binary codes. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will at first learn what are the binary codes, thereafter we will observe the classification of binary codes. Any information, be that a character or an image or an audio file, anything for that matter, needs to be converted into a sequence of ones and zeros in order to be stored in computers. This is called binary coding. So basically what happens, there is an information, we use encoding so that we can convert that information into a sequence of ones and zeros and this sequence of ones and zeros is stored into the computer. Now if we want to retrieve that information, all we have to do is perform decoding and thereafter we will observe the information again. So basically the process of encoding and decoding is carried out using binary codes. Now binary codes can be broadly classified into two different categories, the alphanumeric codes and the numeric codes. Coming to the alphanumeric codes, these are actually the combinations of alphabets and numbers or in other words character sets which can be represented using binary codes. Now there are various alphanumeric codes available out there but the basic ones are the first ASCII that is American Standard Code for Information Interchange thereafter EBCDIC or Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code. Now ASCII is of 7 bits and EBCDIC is of 8 bits. Now let's learn about this a bit more details so that we get to understand what is the significance of these bits. So we will start with alphanumeric codes first. And since ASCII is the 7-bit variation, let's begin with that first. Now as I told you earlier, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This was developed by American Standards Association which eventually became the ANSI or American National Standards Institute. So what happens in case of ASCII, we have got four lower order bits B1, B2, B3 and B4 and using these four lower order bits, you already know we can generate 16 different patterns starting from all zeros till all ones. Now apart from these four lower order bits, there are three more higher order bits and using these three we can generate eight different sequences starting from 000 till 111. Now observe in total we have 4 plus 3 that is 7 bits. Now using 7 bits we can represent 2 raised to the power 7 that is 128 different patterns. Let's now see how the ASCII chart is formed. Here this higher order bits will specify the columns as you can see, 000 is 0, 001 is 1 and so on and the finally 111 is 7. Coming to the lower order bits, this will specify the rows and there are 0 to 15, 16 different rows. Now the alphanumeric codes in general are predefined. So let's observe the chart for ASCII. In case of ASCII, the chart is filled like this. As you can see, there are some operations, some characters, the numbers that we use, then the alphabets both in uppercase and lowercase. So all of these are predefined in the ASCII chart. Now these ASCII codes are mainly used in computers and in digital communications. Now ASCII was the first character encoding set which over the years had so many extensions. And the extension which became immensely popular in the modern times is Unicode. Now let me illustrate how to decode this ASCII chart. Say we would like to represent the uppercase A in here and for this the ASCII code is 100 then 0001 which is 65. Now why it is 65? If you observe this is the 7th bit, right? And the place value of the 7th bit would be 1 less than its place number that is 2 raised to the power 6, so it gives us 64. Now underneath the place value 64, we have placed 1 and coming to the least significant bit, that is 1, is placed underneath 2 raised to the power 0 or the place value of B1. So 64 plus 1 will give us 65 
which is the decimal representation of the uppercase alphabet A in ASCII standard. So, this is all about the ASCII codes. Now, coming to EBCDIC, we already learned that that these are of 8 bits. So, what basically happens in here, we get one more higher order bit named B8. Now, with the extension of just this one bit, observe, we actually have increased the number of columns. Incorporation of B8 alongside the bits B7 to B1 basically just doubles up the number of patterns. Think about all the bit sequences generated by the bits B7 to B1, once having zeros in the B8 and once having 1 in B8's place. So, we will now have 16 columns, that is 0 to F and 16 rows, which we already had. If you remember, during the study of octal and hexadecimal numbers, we observed that the bigger the base, the more we can represent with lesser number of digits. Specifically for that reason, here we are using hexadecimal symbols to represent the columns and the rows. Let's now observe how the chart is filled. Now, you might be wondering that why there are these blank spaces. Actually, these are left blank intentionally. This chart in here is an invariant version of the EBCDIC code. In these blanks, region specific characters such as Chinese, Japanese, Korean, etc. are specified. On the contrary, the character sets mentioned in here, they remain the same in case of all the variants of the EBCDIC codes. EBCDIC was invented by IBM in 1963. So, that is all about the EBCDIC codes. Now, since we are done with this alphanumeric codes, let's now come to the numeric codes. The numeric codes are of two types, the weighted numeric codes and the non-weighted numeric codes. In case of weighted, we know the place values are responsible for the generation of the patterns. Now, weighted numeric codes are of different types. Some popular examples are 8421, 2421, 3321, 84 minus 2 minus 1, 631 minus 1. Basically, in all these, the number specifies the place values. Now, among all these weighted codes, these four specifically are self complementary codes. Let's now understand the concept of self complementary code using this weighted code 84 minus 2 minus 1. Shall we? So basically, 84 minus 2 minus 1 are the place values of a 4 bit binary number. Now, if we are using the pattern 0, 1, 1, 1, observe the value that we will retain. 1 is placed underneath 4, and then again 1 is placed underneath minus 2. So 4 plus minus 2 is 2. Then 2 plus minus 1 will give us the value 1. Now, let's see what happens if we toggle the bits. So, we will end up obtaining the pattern that will be 1, 0, 0, 0. Observe the placement of 1. It is placed underneath 8. So, this pattern will give us 8 in 8, 4, minus 2, minus 1. Now, these two patterns are actually one's complement of one another, right? Now, interestingly enough, 1 and 8 are also the 9's complement of one another because 8's 9's complement is 1, as 9 minus 8 is 1. Similarly, 1's 9's complement will be 8, because 9 minus 1 is 8. So, here, the code of a digit and the code of a 9's complement of that digit are actually 1's complement of one another. So, this is all about the self-complementary codes. Now, let's move on to the non-weighted codes. Now, non weighted numeric codes are of two types. The first one is called the gray code. Now, this one is a very important type of numeric binary code with numerous applications. This is also popularly known as unit distance code. We will learn about this code in the upcoming sessions. The next type of non weighted numeric code is XS3 codes. These are sequential. Additionally, these are also self complementary in nature. So, this is how the binary codes can be broadly classified. So, in this session, 
we first learned what are the binary codes. Thereafter, we observed the classification of the binary codes. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe the numeric codes in details. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.